Welcome. I'm so glad to, to be here with you today. I'm super excited about everything that has been going on. We've, we've put on a fraud seminar this week with um, the three of the banks in town, the First National Bank, um, First Interstate Bank, and American State Bank worked together and they they took care of everything and helped people in our community be able to avoid hopefully at least some situations of fraud and scam that that plague them we we are busy busy getting ready for the rural ministry conference that's coming up and that's a doozy to prepare for but i'm super excited about what that's going to mean for us in iowa and what it means for the ministry of the whole state of iowa um and that is extra special because sometimes it feels like in our small little spaces that that what we do is is less significant than what people do in big spaces and that is so not true we are affecting our communities and our churches and the souls of people who um who surround us in some very important ways in in rural iowa and it is so valuable to make sure that everybody in rural iowa is able to tap into the resources they need to be able to to do that both laity and clergy and so that's an exciting thing we have coming up and um, I want to lift up as we as we share some in in the way of announcements that you know that we've had some staff changes again. We um, are really working to try to keep the church financially solvent and to not have it affect the ministries of the church. So much happens out of our church building from the the lady who are huge influence in our communities and and we don't want to lose any of the ministry we do uh, because finances are really rough for everybody right now um, so we're trying to make changes that that are the best for our congregation and that keep everything going smoothly in the midst of that we we also are being creative about ways to to bring more into the financial um arena and so if you uh, are interested at all and have the ability to do so we're going to be doing a fundraiser sort of fundraiser i'm not sure how to say it we're actually going to be um working for a different group that is going to be doing some concessions at 4th of July. And excitingly, we are going to um, just have to show up and do, do a little bit and it'll make a big difference. So we're trying to be creative and do some new things and um, just see how God can work in the middle of of all of this sometimes we get lost in it and we think we have to save ourselves and we forget that it's it's christ who saves us every time and we thank god for that gift of salvation and for all the ways that god brings salvation into our lives into our world into this congregation and occasionally i think as christians it's good to to be humbled and to be brought down and to be in the position we're in right now as a church because it reminds us that we do rely on god that we really do need each other and god and we can't just do everything ourselves so um as we try to figure out how things are going to work around here we ask for your patience and grace and we know that uh, that your heart for christ your heart for loving god and loving each other is going to keep us stable through through any change that we go through and praise god for that you guys are amazing 
we have we have the best lady and we we can make it through this together because God made us for that and I rejoice in that today um, as we go through our our scripture we're gonna start in the Psalms we haven't read from there for a little while and don't you just love how beautiful the Psalms are um, some of our favorite scripture passages come out of the book of Psalms and we're going to read from Psalm 116 today and it is kind of a longer Psalm so we're just going to read the last section of it so verses 12 through 19 but if you are if you are following along at home and you have time to do it read all of Psalm 116 it's a beautiful Psalm uh, so starting with verse 12 what shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, Praise the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to just praise the Lord? As we start today, let's be in that spirit of praise. Let's just be in awe of God, what God can do, who God is in our lives, in our ministry. And as we do, we read today from the ninth chapter of Matthew. And um, this is this is one of those uh, chapters in the the scripture that kind of bounces around a little bit. There's a lot in one chapter here. We're going to read the section we're going to look at is Matthew 35 through 38. And um, if you read all of this chapter, you're going to find yourself in in lots of different places with Jesus because um, it's sort of like pieces put together. A lot of Matthew is like that. It's very didactic. It's, it's learning. And so it's pieces of scripture that are, are held together in a way that it will teach us. Matthew is our great teacher of, of the gospels. And so, uh, we remember that and so if you do go back and read the whole chapter in of chapter 9 in Matthew do know that it's going to take you lots of different places because the stories aren't going to feel super connected but they're all very important so this one is at the end of Matthew chapter 9 Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This is God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this section in Matthew, um, which is the prominent part of our lectionary reading today, since, since so much of this chapter is kind of disconnected, I didn't um, put all of it in there. We I stuck to one section and uh, and I think that's that's important today for what we're talking about anyway because 
what I want to talk to us about today, we've been, been talking this summer about um, our Methodist heritage and what's important to us, who we are as the United Methodist Church, um, especially in this time of disaffiliation where we have a few churches leaving the denomination. It's good for us to remember who we are. Why, why Methodist? Why this denomination? Why this church? And I think Matthew chapter 9 really speaks to that because one of the important tenets of Methodism is prevenient grace. This is something that wasn't really talked much about before John Wesley's time. But Wesley um, really pressed this as one of the most important things to remember that when, when we're looking at the path of salvation, God works when we don't. So there are denominations out there where most of what the denomination is set up to do is to have people respond to God. It's all about us choosing God. But John Wesley says, we're looking at that the wrong way. God chooses us. Before we do anything, God goes before us. God seeks us. We're going to sing a song today in church. I love it. It is, um, I sought the Lord and nobody knows it. Honestly, I, every church I go to, they, they tend to not know it until I teach it to them. Um, because it's just one of those overlooked hymns, but it is a beautiful hymn of prevenient grace. Listen to these words. I sought the Lord, and afterward I knew. He moved my soul to seek Him. He was seeking me. He moved my soul to seek Him. I thought all along that I was, I was chasing God, right? We, we do that as people. We think it's all about us all the time. And we think, you know, we're the ones acting. We're the ones who are seeking God. We're the ones who are responding. And in reality, we forget how hard God is working on us. How hard God is working, working, working to get us to the place where we do seek Him. We don't just randomly seek God. God puts that seed within us. And that is prevenient grace. God giving grace to us, coming after us, seeking us out before we even know to look for God. That gospel of prevenient grace is super important because without the gospel of prevenient grace, we forget how important every single human being is in this world. We forget that everyone is being sought by God. Children of God being, um, being absolutely hungered after by our God. Imagine a God who can do and be and have anything seeking us out, caring about us, loving us first. It's not about what we do. It is about what God has done first for us. And that is an important part of Methodism that sets us apart from some other denominations when, and it's the reason that we theologically do certain things a certain way in the Methodist Church. For example, we don't rebaptize people because baptism um, for us isn't just our decision. We don't just decide to either do it or, or have our children do it. It's God working in that child and in that covenant. So we don't rebaptize because God did it. God did it first. 
And what God did, God did. Even though we fall short. So our act of of doing baptismal renewal instead of rebaptism is an act that consciously seeks to acknowledge what God has done for us and puts God first in our relationship. And I think that's very important. That's an important part of our history and heritage that in all things, even in in the chaos that's that started it all right even before anything was and chaos existed god was and even then god was seeking us out i love having a god who seeks me who cares enough for me to come after me to, to not just leave me in my chaos, to not just leave the earth the way it was. I'm a big fan of chaos. You all know that. I mean, oh my goodness. Keeping things in order is really difficult for me. That's not the way my brain works. I like chaos. But boy, do I ever like order too. Our God is the one who loves us in our chaos. He can embrace that chaos that we are, that mess that we are, and still seek us out to bring us order, to bring us life. And that is provenient grace. This passage from Matthew that we get today is Jesus seeking people out. He's going and curing the sick. He's not, he's not going to them and saying, well, um, I'll heal you, but first, can you just tell me what you believe? I'll let you in the church, but first, do you meet these criteria? That's not what Jesus does. Jesus seeks out everyone who needs him, and everyone needs him. And he goes to all the villages. He teaches in the synagogues. He proclaims the good news of the kingdom. He heals every disease and sickness because that's who our God is because before we knew we needed Jesus to come do that for us God sent him before we knew exactly what the salvation should look like God heard us and knew and sought us out. And when Jesus looked at the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were the chaos before creation. They were, but now they're going to be. And that's our story as Methodists. We were but because God sought us out, now we are going to be. Prevenient grace. Always thinking of religion, not from the human perspective, but from God's. From the place where we acknowledge that maybe others don't see it, but God was first. God is first. God seeks us and claims us and calls us out as a God of love. And because of that, we labor. Because the harvest, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray for provenient grace in the lives of the people who aren't yet laboring in the same direction we are. Pray for provenient grace to come upon everyone who doesn't yet know the Lord, who doesn't yet um, understand 
that God is seeking them. Pray. Because the Lord of the harvest has a big job in store for us. And we're going to need a lot of help. Amen.